Hello and welcome back. In this video I'll be creating a scene class which will wrap up the pre-existing classes we made for the vertex as well as for the triangle. Uh, by using the scene class we'll be able to then easily add objects into our scene and manipulate it as well. Now, if you find this video helpful and you'd like to support my website, please go to www.maticnose.com and click on the PayPal icon. So, to begin, we need to create uh, a scene tree, well, a scene class, and for now, um, it's going to be very simple just because we want to render triangles on the screen. So, to begin, let's just create some folders here and call it scene. And we'll go into Windows here and create that same folder as well. And again, we need to create some blank files here. So I just call them Scene. And we'll move them into the Scene folder. Okay, so we have our scene.h and our scene.cpp. The scene.h starts off simple. Um, we include the gameopengl.h file here because our scene initially is going to be running only with OpenGL. Later on, we're going to be able to use the scene data uh, with DirectX as well. So the scene is not dependent um, on which renderer we choose. It's going to actually be used by both. Now, let's take a look at the scene class. It contains a constructor which takes our pointer to an er our, our error handler, as well as a pointer to our uh, game OpenGL class. Um, now, when we, use, when we start using DirectX, we're also going to create a new constructor here which will take the error handler as well as a pointer to our DirectX class. But for now, we're just going to use our OpenGL one. Has a virtual destructor, has an initialize function, has an update function, and it has a clear all. Uh, the members uh, that are contained are a, a variable here called mRenderer. And this is just like a flag that determines which render we're going to be using with our scene. We need to keep track of this so that we can then choose um, specific calls from one renderer as opposed to the other. So we need to start implementing this now because um, Later on, we want it to be modular for adding the DirectX code as well. We have a pointer here to our error handler and a pointer to the OpenGL class. The last thing we have here is the objects which are going to be contained in our scene. Now, initially, we're just going to be rendering one triangle to the screen, so I just have uh, a pointer to a triangle. Before I go into the details of the uh, scene class here, what I'm going to do first is show you this graphics render structure. And we're going to put it inside the core since a few other things may need to use it later on. So we'll go into the core.h here and just under uh, the structures. So I'm just going to put it in right here. So you see we have an enumeration called graphics render and I have uh, the initial values none, which we shouldn't be using, but uh, you can if you don't wish to render anything to the scene. Uh, and then we have two renders. We have a DirectX render and then we have an OpenGL. Now we'll only be using the OpenGL for now, but later on once we start adding DirectX support, we'll be using this one here. Okay, so let's start working with the scene now. At the top here we have uh, our include to our pre-compiled headers and we include the scene.h as well. Um, the next thing we do, uh, did we include the path for a project? Let me just double check this. I don't remember if we'd done this already or not. Uh, no, it doesn't look like we did. We forgot to do this earlier, um, so might as well go and add it in here now. We just need to include the scene so that the compiler will be able to find our code when it needs to. Okay, so back to the constructor. Uh, the constructor takes the pointer to our air handler and a pointer to our OpenGL uh, class. And you see here that 
uh, we set the render equals to the OpenGL um, render. Now, we know that the render is going to be OpenGL because we're calling this constructor. If um, when we start using the DirectX, we're going to have a different constructor, and in that different constructor, we're going to set the render to the DirectX supported here. The next things we do is we, pa uh, we take the values for our air handler and for our OpenGL class, and we just pass them into our member variables, and we initialize the pointer to our triangle to be null. The destructor for our class um, is pretty simple. What it does is it calls our clear all function. Now, we're, uh, that's the next function which I'll show you, but what this does is it um, cleans up anything that the scene ends up creating. So for our initial simple case, we'll be creating a triangle, so the clear all has to delete that triangle. Okay, let's see how we create the triangle first before we go and clear it. Um, what we do is uh, I'm initializing the scene. Uh, well, we have a function here called initialize. And inside initialize, I create three vertices uh, with these specific values. I just chose these arbitrarily so that um, it draws a large triangle in the middle of the screen. And the way that these coordinates have been selected is that this first coordinate, V1, is 0 0.866 uh, units to the right from origin. Origin is in the middle of the screen. So we move a little bit to the right, and then we move down a little bit. So that's, that's roughly where V1 will be located. V2 is 0, 1, 0, so it's going to be, if this is the middle, it's going to be up a little bit here. And the last one, V3, is back and then down a little bit. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You see how we've defined those three vertices. Uh, and then we create a new triangle here, calling the new operator. We pass in those three values for our vertices, and the initial value for the angle is going to be zero here. Now, when we clean up, we end up doing one thing and calling safe delete. And if you remember back in the core, up here we created this macro so that it takes in, if, if there's a, a, a valid value for P here, it deletes it and then sets it to null. So here we're passing in a pointer to our triangle, and if we called this initialize, then it will be valid, uh, so we will delete it. However, if we haven't called initialize, then this won't do anything, because our constructor, you notice here, we set the triangle to be null. So that's just a little security feature we built in. Now the last thing that uh, our scene here can do is that we can update uh, the screen. So uh, upon update, we pass in some floating point number, which is delta time. And what we do is we have to go through everything in our scene and update it as well. Now, since we only have a triangle in our scene, that means we call the triangles update function. And we pass to it the delta time that, passed, that was passed to us, and I'm just scaling it by 30 here. I notice that if I just pass delta time, the triangle rotated too slowly. So I just increased the rotation speed by multiplying it by 30 here. You can play with this number all you like. And then, uh, depending on which render we're, we're using, uh, we're, we've selected to use OpenGL, so it's going to go into this if statement, and, and then we end up calling the OpenGL's class renderer. Now, we haven't define this yet, so we have to go back into our OpenGL code and create this function now to render a triangle. Okay, so there's a few things we have to go do now in our OpenGL class. Uh, so let's go, oh, I noticed here I didn't put these into our folder. Let's do that. Okay, so let's go back into the OpenGL code, and we want, actually want to go into the header file. So what we need to do is add an extra function here to uh, render. So we can do that like this. Uh, so we have our render call now. Um, but as you see here, we have to use a triangle within our OpenGL code. Well, our compiler will complain because it won't know what a triangle is. So we have to go up here and we have to include triangle.h as well. The other thing. Uh, we would like to do is our OpenGL class should have 
uh, well, it should keep track of the scene. So we need to create a new variable here to keep track of our scene. So we'll do that. We'll create a pointer, and we'll call it m p under or m underscore p scene. Now uh, again, scene is not defined for us anywhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is going to go into the function function prototypes and declare prototype as class scene. Now you may be wondering why I do this as opposed to including scene.h here. Well, we'll have a, well, we would have a problem if we do that. Because if we look at what's inside scene.h, you notice that we include opengl.h. And if we go into opengl.h and we included scene.h here, we actually end up creating a loop. So the compiler would complain because it doesn't know where to start and where to finish. So to avoid that loop, what you can do is you can create a function prototype and say, we're going to have a class and it's going to be called scene. And uh, so that when it goes through here, it knows how to compile this code because it assumes that this class is going to exist. Now we can go into our game opengl.cpp here and actually include the, cl uh, the, the cl scene.h here. Okay, so that's just a little trick to get around that uh, circular include. Uh, now we want to go and write the code for that renderer and I want to put it close to the other code. Uh, so let's see if I can find that other code. Uh, what was it called? Uh, render pre. Okay, so we have render pre and then we have render post. So I want to put the render code right in here. Okay. Now you can put the render code anywhere. I just kind of like to group things together in the CPP file. So the render, what it's going to do is it's going to render a three colored triangle. And the way it does it is we pass in the, the, a pointer to our triangle and within the code we call glrotateF which rotates the triangle um, along the z-axis so it rotates about the z-axis by this angle here and then it renders our triangle based on the three vertices that we have within the triangle. Uh, each vertex here is defined using the glvertex3f and we pass to it the x value, the y value, and the z value within the triangle. Uh, each vertex is given a color, and I've just chosen some arbitrary colors here so that it's kind of colorful on the screen. Uh, so I just have some numbers here between 0 and 1 to define mm, the color codes. Now, uh, what you can do is you can get fancy by going into your triangle class and actually including these color codes in the triangle class. So then you're not restricted to having all your triangles the same color. Instead, you can define the color of a triangle and then when you go and render it, it'll render it because um, you can then pull the colors from the triangle class. So the way that, that this, this uh, OpenGL code works is uh, relatively simple. We call it GL begin and then we pass in GL triangles. Uh, and then we p start passing in vertex at a time, one, two, three vertices, and then call GL end. Uh, and then what that does is it basically tells OpenGL uh, that we're, we're trying to render uh, one triangle with these three vertices. Now the only thing missing in our code is um, our use for this uh, scene right here. We haven't actually chosen to use it yet. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, we want to initialize the scene whenever we call initialize within our OpenGL class. Inside initialize, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene. And when we create the new scene, we call the new operator and we pass to it the pointer to our error handler and we point, uh, we pass to it ourselves. Now ourselves is a pointer to our OpenGL class, so you see here that the, the constructor is, is correct. We're passing in pointer to our error handler and a pointer to OpenGL class. Then if the return value here is true, then that means that the memory is able to allocate uh, enough resources for a scene, so we continue on down here. However, if this fails, then 
we generate an error message and we set the game state to stop since uh, there wasn't enough memory to create a new scene. Uh, and then what we do is we call the scenes initialize function so that we can then generate that triangle that we want to use, uh, allocate the memory for it, uh, and set up the vertice values. And if that succeeds, then as you see here, we uh, continue on. However, if it fails, then we set uh, an error message here. Well, we set uh, this quit to be true and uh, we stop the game state. Now we can go back into initialize um, <clears throat> under the scene. And here you see that uh, it will always return true. It can't return false. Um, but I guess what we should do is actually check here if MP triangle if it returns zero, meaning it cannot allocate memory, then we should return false like that. And as a matter of fact, we should also generate an error message here. Um, so we can do that just by, let's copy some of this code and just say not enough memory cannot create a new triangle like this. Okay. So I think that should be it. Oh no, uh, I forgot one thing now. So we're, we're using the new operator to create a new scene. However, at the very end, when uh, our program is closing, we have to deallocate this new memory that we created here. So in our destructor, we need to also add some code. So if we did allocate memory to uh, MP scene, then we have, then we end up calling the clear all function, which should get rid of everything that was in the scene, and then we delete that pointer. Now the other thing we need to do is in the constructor our OpenGL code, we should set this equal to null, like this, and that's just to ensure that in our destructor this part here works pro appropriately. All right. So now if we build our code, we might be able to see a triangle on the screen rotating. Everything looks okay, so let's give it a run. And we don't see anything. Okay, so we do have a bug in our program somewhere. Okay, I think I know what could be the problem. Uh, let's go into our update because it seems like we're not rendering anything to the screen. Update. Okay, right. Here, we have render stuff here, but we haven't actually rendered anything. So, we need to put some code in here that says, uh, every time through our frame, so uh, here, when we're rendering to the frame, if, if we are playing the game, then it's going to update the time, and then it's going to call update game. When update game gets called, we do a pre-render call, and then after the pre-render call, we call this um, scene update. So we have to update the scene. And updating the scene will end up calling the render function to render the triangle. If this fails, we exit with a false. If it returns true, uh, if, it, if it renders correctly, then we go through here and we render post. And then we actually display things to this. So let's compile this and uh, run that. Okay, so now we see our triangle rotating on the screen. Uh, and when we quit, everything seems okay. So that's as easy as uh, being able to render one triangle on the screen. Now, let me show you how quickly we can go and start adding other triangles to the scene. All we need to do now is go into our scene and start manipulating the scene. So instead of having one triangle, let me go and create another triangle. So I'm just going to call this triangle 2. And in the constructor, we're just going to go through here and set it to null initially, like this. And then upon initializing, let's go create another triangle. And this one I'm going to set off to a different location. So I'm going to 
I call this two 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 one two two and two three and I'm going to make this triangle slightly smaller and not centered on the screen um, so let's see here maybe I'll put it uh, let me think here I'll put it at one and zero and then I'll make this one at 0 0.9 and 0 0.1 and the last one here at 0 0.8 and 0 okay this should be a really small triangle actually make it a little bit bigger by doing that Okay, so those are my new coordinates, and I'm going to go in here and set up a new triangle, create a new triangle, and I'll give it some rotation, maybe 10, and if this is okay, alright, so that creates the memory for a second triangle. Then when we call clear all, we need to clear that second triangle as well. And then when we update, we should also update our second triangle as well. So let's go and do that. Triangle 2. And I'm going to make it rotate in the opposite direction. I'm going to make it rotate slightly slower. So I'm going to decrease that. And then when we render, we have to go and render two triangles, so we render the first one and then we're going to render the second one. So all I did is change some code in the scene. Now let's build it and run it and see what happens. Okay, so now you see we, we have two triangles that are moving on the screen. Um, we have the, the big one which is rotating and the small one which is rotating slower. Now notice something very interesting here. The second triangle, I didn't center it in the center of the screen uh, so when I rotate it it's actually rotating about the center but because it's offset it's actually moving around the center point. This is very important to notice because um, the way that OpenGL works is everything's working in its own coordinate frame so when you start ha having 3D models where you have uh, bipeds walking or things being thrown, you have to make sure you're doing the appropriate math, 3D math, so that everything is being offset properly from the correct origin. I'll go into that more in more detail later on once we start building the scene tree or the scene graph in more detail. But for now, you can sort of get the idea that of how to add different shapes and how to get them rendered onto the screen. There's just one last thing I'd like to point out here with the program is when we run the code we see our triangle rotating on the screen. If I were to bring up another window you see that our triangle stops rotating and as a matter of fact you'll notice here that our window is actually not updating that's why we're getting all this garbage on the screen. As soon as I uh, give focus to our window it continues rotating. So I can stop it and start it anytime I choose like this. And again all that was done because of our code for our lose and gain focus. And so let me just point that out again to you. Uh, if we go under window lose focus, you see here that we set our game state to be paused. And when we go and we receive focus, then if the game state is paused, we return it back to play. So when we are in the frame function here, we see we call, uh, if the game state is play, we update the time and then we update the screen. Now when we update the screen we go and render. If we're not in play you notice that there is no render calls here. So we don't render anything to the screen and that's why we end up with uh, nothing being displayed on the screen. So what you could do is add some extra functionality here, maybe an else statement if, uh, for instance, else if it's paused then we render a default screen maybe something that says paused 
so that we do see, see the screen being updated and then it'll say that it's paused. And then as soon as we return, maybe you give the user an option to continue or maybe the game just automatically starts playing again. So that's how you go, go into our, the code here and manipulate that uh, small logic. All right, well, come back to the, for the next tutorial, and uh, I'll be discussing how to add keyboard and mouse um, handling into the program.